Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Expansion Pack podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Danzel, joined by my co-host, Manny, over here to my right. And, um, you know, for those of you who are watching, you might notice that we got somebody missing here. And uh, my guy, May 25th, he's feeling a little under the weather. So, um, you know, we're, we don't have him today, but that's all right, man. We're going to we're gonna hold down the fort. We're going to talk about some games. Um I'm going to start off by saying, though, you know, for those of you who, who've clicked on this uh, episode in general, you know, we're going to be talking about opening night live in Gamescom. And, you know, we uh, just what about a, a couple hours ago, uh, Jeff Keighley got up on stage, you know, showed us about roughly 30 games. A lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Um, you know, so a, a lot of the things that we predicted, I would say about everything that we predicted was wrong. <laughs> Literally, like nothing that we we said, you know, or tried to, you know, wished into existence uh, showed up at the show. But, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But even though we don't have my boy May 25th here, you know, in the, in the spirit of things, we're still going to hit you off with the buffer. So um, he uh, he he uh, sent it over to us. So basically, the buffer for this week is what video game um, that you play on console or PC would you want to see moved over to mobile or basically like make a mobile version of it? So, um, Manny, I'm going to let you start on this one because I, I think we both have interesting things to say about this. Um, and I, and it sucks because I kind of wish Chris was here for this one since obviously since he came up with it, but more specifically because I think Manny and I were in unison about our thought process around this, but Manny, I'll let you start off. Yeah. So I'm, I didn't really do my full research, but, I hope this game doesn't have a mobile port. If it does, then I'm sorry for my incorrect answer. But um, I feel like a game that you can kind of like be laid back playing a mobile platform. I'll, I got to go with XCOM. I haven't played XCOM in a while, but I do like a nice strategy game once in a while. And I feel like on a mobile platform where you can just sit back, you got your screen, you're just looking around, planning, plotting against your enemies on the next attack. I feel like. You know, XCOM would be a perfect game. It's not too fast paced like how uh, PUBG would be or Fortnite. So you're not worried about being a sweat and having a controller with you all the times because it's pretty impossible impossible to play with a touchscreen on like games like Fortnite. Mm. But um, like you know, like a strategy based, like I said, you could just pick up, maybe do like a couple turns at a time. You, you're not forced to like be glued onto the screen for a long time, but. You know, if you do want to be screwed on a screen for a while, you can. But yeah, I think a nice little strategy game like XCOM would be good. Absolutely, man. I a thousand percent agree with that one. Strategy games are like perfect for a uh, touchscreen. I, I feel like in some instances they can be better for um, for like a mobile device than like using a keyboard and mouse or even a controller. So um, I yeah. hear you on that one. So so for my answer, and we talked about this a little bit, uh, it's kind of complicated, right? Because Nowadays, I feel like everything has been mobilized, you know, especially when you look at what Microsoft's doing with, uh, you know, Game Pass and, and you know, their, their whole xCloud initiative or, or Xbox Cloud Gaming initiative. Um, there are pretty much a ton of games that have been mobilized and, and not only mobilized in the sense that you can just, you know, stream them to your phone, but you also don't need a controller. So you can just use the touchscreen and whatnot. So, you know... I cheated a little bit. I was looking through the games on Game Pass, and I was like, you know, which one, which one, which one makes the most sense for uh, the cloud gaming initiative around solely having touchscreen controls? And you know, there were there were a couple of um, those real time strategy games you were talking about up in there, but one that I was looking at, and I feel like this could go one of two ways. But Hades was the game I was looking at, where I was like, you know what, I could see myself playing, you know, like like um, picking up you know, my phone every once in a while and just like playing a, a little bit, trying to progress a little bit further into the story with Hades. I know that it's a bit more of a precision based game, like, right. Like you have to be a little bit more con- tight with the controls because this just seems like there's a lot of fucking chaos going on on the screen at once. And, um, you know, like it, it's from what I understand, a pretty hard game, but I feel like it's one of those games where I could, you know, try to casually play it on a a, a, a touchscreen. It wouldn't be ideal, but I think the game itself is at such a high caliber that, you know, why not try to play it on on a on a mobile phone if you can. So that's that's gonna be my answer for now. But uh and next just week, that, uh 
Mm-hmm. I was gonna say it sucks that Hades is actually leaving Game Pass. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's <laughs> what uh, next week? I think it's leaving Game Pass. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, damn, I should have played it too before it left, but I mean, I guess I mm-hmm. might have some time, but I probably won't get to it because we still got Saints Row to play, Madden, so on and so forth. But um, but yeah, we're gonna try to get Chris's answer next week. You know, we'll sneak it in right before we get to the to the next icebreaker next week because I'm curious, you know, where he was at with that one. What what game he had in mind. Uh, when he was coming up with the questions. So, Chris, thank you for uh, for that icebreaker if you're watching. Um, and, you know, we'll catch you next week, man. I hope you feel better. Uh, but, you know, as we talked about before, we're going to get into some games that were just announced uh, just today. So, you know, as we mentioned last week, uh, Jeff Keighley and his his crew, they put on another show for opening night live at Gamescom. They're, they pretty much are opening up the show that's going to be taking place for the next couple of days. So even though today we got a ton of announcements, there are some potential other things that we may be seeing in the coming days. Like I know Microsoft has like a little um, showcase that's going to be happening on Thursday. They're kind of downplaying it, so I'm not expecting any big announcements or anything. But, you know, I'm sure some news will trickle out of that that we'll talk about next week. But um, but today was a lot of fun, Manny. I got to say, man, you know, there's, there's there's a lot of cool things that got announced. Again, none of none of the stuff that we talked about, you know, no, no Grand Theft Auto. No, uh, no new Kojima project unless you count this um, podcast that, uh, and you know, obviously we're we gonna rep the podcast out here. We're gonna, we gonna rock out, you know, go go check out Kojima's thing on, on Spotify while you're listening to our podcast too, you know, make sure you uh, hit that little subscribe button or follow button or whatever before you go to Kojima's thing. But still, what a tease, bro. How you gonna show my mans up on the screen? Everybody's like, oh shit, we about to finally get some, some Kojima news. And he's like, oh, go to Spotify and check out my podcast, guys. Like, Once I saw that Spotify thing he had in the background, I was like, no, no. And, yep, he brought it up. And sadly, we're here. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, he implements Spotify in, like, the next Death Stranding or something like that. Just because. Hey, but no, no, man. It's sad, man. It's saddening. Uh I was so mad about uh, that. <laughs> I guess it makes sense that he would save that Xbox Cloud game for Xbox Showcase. So we're probably not going to see that until next June. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, I honestly... You know what? I still feel like it's going to show up at Jeff's thing. Because I still feel like they just okay. have that relationship. So... I think maybe like Phil and Kojima might be on the Game Awards stage to show off something. Like I, I'm still sticking to my guns on this one, and I think whatever we see next from Kojima is gonna be on a Jeff Keighley stage. And you know we got a day for that too, December eighth. So December eighth. So y'all already know we will be live streaming that as we have done for the past couple of years. Um, honestly, I think that's like one of my favorite things that we do over the over like the year for the podcast. Like I really enjoy watching the game awards and like kind of live reacting to it. Cause it is long, but it is also fun. And we get some banger announcements. So that's yeah. uh, that's some good stuff. But speaking of announcements, Manny, we're going to, you know, we're each going to pick three different games that really kind of spoke to us throughout the, throughout the showcase. And Manny, I'm going to have you go first on this one here. So, you know, uh, what are your, what are your three games? And, uh, you know, we'll kind of talk about it. Yeah. So the three games that, Looked pretty much interesting to me. Caught my attention. I gotta say, the finals with the creators of you know Battlefield into it. This you know might be the savior of our first person shooter drought. <laughs> <laughs> that um, also the Expanse from um, how do I forget the name Telltale? Telltale, there you go. Telltale mm-hmm. Games. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I've seen the Telltale game, unless I've been living under a rock. But you know, I'm a big fan of their company and what they brought out, so I can't wait to try that out. And everything, not everything, or everywhere. everywhere, I get the most everywhere. everywhere. So I'm a, I'm gonna start off with everywhere real quick. Yeah, that was like the first game that they showed off, and I have to admit, like just from an art style, it it caught my attention like immediately. But it also reminded me of Everwild, <clears throat> which is um, you know the the game that's coming out of Rare that apparently is you know gotten pushed back and seems like it's in development limbo or whatever. But I just 
I, I couldn't help but think like, you know, I might be inspired by it or something, but like the, the art design and like how, I don't know, it, it, it seemed like expansive and, and beautiful and, you know, a bit flowy. I, I'm definitely really curious to learn more about it because we, it was literally just a teaser trailer, but I mean, in what we saw, I, I liked it. I definitely liked it. And then um, the other one that you mentioned too, the, uh, the finals, I don't know. Again, nothing about these games. Like they're they're all very like high level teasers. Like okay, like you know, let's let's just do a little something, sprinkle your attention. And honestly, that's kind of the gripe I had with a lot of these reveals um, is that there wasn't too much substance to them. Like you know, there's there's a decent amount of gameplay, but I feel like a lot of it was just like CG trailers and things like that. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I guess developers aren't necessarily ready to show off as much gameplay and it is there is still some value in having those teasers sprinkled in here and there um but i wish we got a little bit more gameplay out of some of these games but the ones that we did get gameplay from i gotta say <clears throat> very very good this isn't this isn't exactly one of my three but one of them that i feel like got an extended gameplay look at that i was very happy to see was high on life um, and that's the game that's made by uh, the Rick and Morty creators, for those of you who don't remember. And I got to say, man, that that game just looks fun. Like, it looks like there's just so much personality beaming through that game. So whenever that hits and, and we know it's, it's dropping in Game Pass. Um, actually, I think they talked about a release date here. Uh, the, yeah, I think December, December 13th. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> getting that December 13th. You know, that's definitely something that we're going to be talking about quite a bit once that comes out, because it just looks like just looks like fun. It just looks like something I want to explore a lot more into. So good thing on the uh, good thing to actually get more gameplay on something like that. Um, but my three games. My three games. I, I will start with the first one. That's uh, probably not a big surprise because we've talked about it quite a bit here. But the Callisto Protocol. Oh, my God. So they showed off like a little, uh, you know, a little gameplay section. And, and you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, like the marketing strategy around this game is to just show off like how gruesome the dude can die. It is great. <laughs> but like they showed off a little gameplay section where, you know, like the, the guy is basically getting uh, flushed by like, you know, a wave of water. And it's like uh, like pushing him through like these tunnel systems and like you, you as the character can kind of maneuver around and make sure you don't, you know, smack into these pillars. But even like if you clip the pillars, the pillars make like this visceral sound. And like, I don't know how the dude's not losing arms when he's hitting these pillars, but whatever. At the end of it, though, homeboy gets hit in a in a fan and like gets snapped in half. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and he's still breathing after he's snapped in half. <laughs> And then they like cut the cut the trailer. I'm like, bro, they just like they just decided they were gonna focus on the most ridiculous ways to kill this guy and make it look as hyper realistic as you can. Because the uh, I think it's I keep wanting to say Josh Jamel, but I feel like it's not him. It's some other actor. Either way, yeah, they got him looking crazy realistic. Like everything about that game looks hyper realistic. And, um, you know, I've recently gone back to playing Dead Space 3 with um, with our buddy Felix. And it's like, I'm clamoring for that experience again, you know, like a modernized ex- version of that. And like this Callisto Protocol is just like exactly right up my alley. It's it's going to be dropping in, in December, December 2nd, if I remember correctly. You already know I'm going to be here for that. I'm going to try to stream that. Um, so y'all can watch me shit my pants on stream, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, man, you gonna you gonna stream it too? Uh, I can't. I can't stream it, man. What you mean? Who said I'm playing bro? the game? Who said I'm buying it? What I you mean? Buy it. No, I definitely, I definitely try to play the game, man. I like this game. It's, it's third person, so it's not gonna be as bad, but like I'm still gonna be scared. Yeah, I, oh man, I. Playing Dead yeah, Space 3, there were moments where, like, I'm, like, panicky. Not necessarily scared, but panicky because the dynamic of it is so different, right? It's not, like, it's not necessarily, like, Resident Evil or, like, a, you know, 
zombie game or anything like that where you know you're aiming at the head. Like, you have to be more strategic about, like, you know, I have to shoot this tentacle off. Like, that's another thing that they showed off in the, you know, the, the conversation that they had with, um, I think it's Glenn Schofield, one of the people who were making the game. Um, you know, he talked about, well, okay, like, just like in Dead Space, you know, when you when you shoot off a limb or you, sh- you aim for the head, then, like, something sprouts up and now you have a bigger problem on your hands and you have to shoot, like, you know, the like the extra things that spout up off of their heads. That's how it was in Dead Space. Um, I think he said they're like different tentacles now and they, they kind of showed off a little little glimpse of it. But man, I just, I can't wait till December. It's just that simple. That game is going to be amazing. Um, and yeah, Manny, we go, we got, you know, we're going to get you to get that game. You know, we're going to get you streaming it. I'm definitely going to get the game. I got to play it. Yeah. Like as, as much as I'm scared, it's like one of those things where, you know, you play Res- you play not Resident Evil, uh, Death Space, and slow. This game is definitely going to be the su- uh, successor to that. So. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, supposedly, what February, January, whatever the hell EA is going to decide to push that out, then we're going to get the Dead Space remake. It'll be a good time, man. It'll be a good time for horror games around that. When it, whenever it actually drops, um, so I'm excited to see that. Uh, so the next one for me, I'm going to go with Lies of P. Now. I'm going to be 100% real with you, man. As I was watching the trailer for that game, right, the very beginning portions of the trailer, I'm like, all right, this is just CG. I'm like, watch them, like, hit me off with a fake out and it'd be some fucking top-down twin-stick shooter or something stupid. You know, like, like, because they always Mm -hmm. hit you with, like, the beautiful, um, especially with, like, certain indie games. They'll hit you with the beautiful... CG trailer and make everything look nice. And then boom, when you cut to the gameplay, it's like a completely different vibe altogether. And that's the vibe I was getting from the beginning of the trailer. I was like, yo, this looks nice, but I don't trust it. And then they eventually cut into real gameplay, you know, and it like, well, they the camera angle switched up in such a way where you were like, okay, this is obviously gameplay. So I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm excited for this. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And subsequently, the other game that I want to talk about too did the same or gave me the same vibes. And that one was Atlas Fallen. I was like, the way these are starting off, I'm like, yo, I bet you they're just going to switch up and it's not going to look the way it actually looks. But Atlas Fallen, God damn, that game looks like it's going to be dope. Like just from the 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 gameplay style and like, I, I don't know what they're doing, if they're gliding or whatever, but like the way they're like traversing through the world. And um, it, looks like, yeah, it looks like this co-op in Atlas Fallen I wasn't 100% sure about Lies of P, though, but I definitely want to learn a lot more about that game in particular. It's going to be coming to Game Pass. Um, I don't think we got an official release date, but, you know, they did say it's coming to Game Pass. So um, I think it, it's available on the show floor at Gamescom. So I'm hoping that, you know, we might get a little bit more information. We might get some more um, people like releasing videos about it. And also, because it's not going to be on Game Pass, I'm also hoping that it makes its way onto that Xbox showcase that we talked about this coming Thursday. Because, yeah, I, it looks very mysterious, and I definitely want that. I definitely want that game. They said it's inspired by Pinocchio, so whatever. Yeah, you know, my boy, the lights of P, my boy's trying to be a boy. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be a real boy. But, um, but yeah, what you think about Alice Fallen, though, Manny? Yeah, that game, it just looks so massive. Like, from what you see in the trailer, like, them gliding through the sand and everything like that, the way they're fighting in the combat, the way like, how, like, the particle effects went around and everything like that. I know it's just a trailer, so, you know, everything could be nerfed when a game does release, but, like, it definitely does pique my interest a little. Probably going to be, like, it, gives, it does give me a little bit of that... Uh, Kind of like looter sh- shooter vibes, even though you're really not shooting in this. It's more of like a melee combat. Mm. I just feel like it's going to be... <clears throat> what is it called? Uh, What's that game that came out on PlayStation that was like... God of Fall. Sh- yeah, that, that... I agree with you, though. I did get those vibes from it. Vibes. Yeah, yeah. But something about the traversal of it changed it up for me. Like, I was like, all right, I, I, could, I can kind of fuck with this, like, dashing through the sand and all that stuff. It, it gave me, like, a, some cross between that and... um Monster Hunter, just because they were fighting like monsters in the beginning. Yo, yeah. That one dude was fucking that, that thing up, bro. Fucking popped it up in the air and then smacked it and it flew like 
a couple of yards, man. I was like, ooh, this, this is kind of hard. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I want, I want to play games like that where, like, you know, the power of fantasy gets realized, where it's like, all right, like I'm super strong and I'm doing like really incredible things. Um, I don't know. It's like a, it's a nice contrast to have games like that as compared to like Callisto Protocol, where you are just human and you're like trying to survive these crazy things that are happening to you. So I want like a more bombastic, like powerful fuck shit up type of game. Like that'd be, that'd be cool to have. Um, I was just going through the list though real quick and it wasn't, this is another one of those games that wasn't in our like list of three, but I can't believe we forgot to talk about this man. Outlast Trials. We talking I mean, about scary shit. That game is going to be great. Cause I think it's like a four player co-op. Mm-hmm. So I definitely signed up for the, you know, the play test when it yes. comes out in uh, October for steam. I'm hoping I get in. I better get in. I'm trying to get my ass scared off. But I'm excited. Like, just everything about it just seems so great. Like, Outlast, there's just something about that game that just, like, works perfectly fine when it comes to, like, those horror games that you just running away from things trying to kill you. Mm. (laughs) You know, I really don't like those types of games normally. But if if there's, like, puzzle solving and things like that involved, that's where it really starts to, you know, get better for me. Now, you take that extra layer of doing that shit with your friends. Forget about it. I mean, I am completely sold with anything like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even even if the game isn't like perfect, like I just know that I'm going to have a great time just playing it with you guys. Like, I, I can't wait for that shit. I am a little disappointed that it's not actually dropping in like the spooky season. Like, yeah, sure. It's I great. Agree. Yeah, it's great that like the, the beta might be out around that time. But like this needs to be one of them games that needs to hit in October. It's like, all right, like this October scary stream shit. You know, this is like the game that would be great for that. Well, you know, at least if we do get accepted into this close play test, it's going to be October 28th to November 1st. So, you know, okay, it's okay. still somewhat spooky season, but only for a little bit. Yeah, only like the tail end of it. But that's all right. That's all right. I mean, I definitely hope we get in there. Um, you know, whoever's out there listening or watching, if y'all got some connections. Hook us up, hook us up, because uh, we would love to love to get our hands on that game as soon as possible. Uh, I, I'm just excited, man. Like, I'm still just looking at that the finals gameplay or not gameplay, but the little teaser ad, and I'm yeah. just it's like, bro, this this I don't know why it just looks like Battlefield. Like, <laughs> I wonder what kind of game this is. I'm sure it's probably not going to be like a massive multiplayer shooter, like you know, Battlefield is usually is. But like, you know, a little like I forgot what they said, like a stadium, mm-hmm. you know, where you based off like destruction and shit. Like that's what Battlefield is, you know what I'm saying? Give me my destruction bet. Hmm. What, so, did, what exactly did they hold on? I know I saw something that that said it was specifically uh, uh, I can't find much it. listener right now. But the, there was something something that I saw, like a, it was like a little interview or something that, that popped up like right after th- the game got revealed that <clears throat> gave a little bit more context about what it was like. Mm. So it's a shooter wrapped in a game show format, which I which I yeah. definitely got the vibe of um, off of the, you know, the little trailer. It seemed like and even just the, the wording of it, the finals, like get to the finals, like it, it definitely gave me that vibe. Um, I wonder if it's gonna be like a battle royale. Like I, I know we've seen so many battle royals, <laughs> but that's cause... the thing, man. Like, and and that's that's kind of one of the things I, I know we've talked about this before on the podcast, but like, I think the battle royale genre is still untapped in certain ways. So it's like, mm-hmm. like I feel like we all have a specific notion of what we think battle royale is, and I feel like you could, especially with a game show format like this, you can turn that on its head real quick, right? Like, like the idea of Battle Royale is that it's basically like Hunger Games, right? And you could turn, like, we could actually get a real Hunger Games style game where it is like broadcast as a TV show kind of thing. And, you know, we're seeing all these crazy things happening in the world. And like, there's a game maker behind the scenes that may be making buildings, you know, blow up or changing the scenery of things. And it seems like this finals game has the potential to do that. Now, probably uh, there's a large portion of this where like I'm inputting my own imagination onto whatever I think is going to happen here. But I just feel like there's a lot of potential for 
them to kind of, you know, fucks with this and and make it something that we've always been wanting from Battle Royale, you know? So I'm I'm hopeful and I definitely signed up for that beta or, you know, that whatever closed alpha, whatever they call it, because I'm, I'm trying to see what this is about for sure. But uh, on to starting to talk about a couple things that we kind of considered as surprises of the show, um, you know, things that, that we that weren't necessarily in our top three per se, but like, you know, we were piqued our interest and we weren't expecting to see there. So the first thing I want to talk about is that PlayStation controller. Now, Manny, I'm going a, I'm to a let you go off on this one at first because I know you've been playing your PlayStation a lot more than I have, but what do you think? What do you think about this? Interesting? Not interesting? Does this seem like a ripoff of like the Elite controller type of thing? Like, what, what, Give me your thoughts. Essentially, yeah. You know, of course, you got to have a competitor for the Microsoft Elite controller, especially since majority of like the COD heads and all that stuff, they play on PlayStation, so... you. You know, to have a look up better for this, it's nice and all, but like, it, it's weird because the fact that you can like just swap out the whole housing of the joysticks and everything like that, it, it gives me vibes that like they did that on purpose so that like if you have drifts, like, okay, just buy these replaceable ones for like, you know, 60 bucks and you get new joysticks. Oh, you already have paddles. Or, you know what I'm saying? That's funny because I saw a comment. It was like, Instead of fixing the problem you already have, you just like have replaceable parts for it for a more price. And I'm hey, like, but you know what though? That's smart. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. Smart. That's smart. It is. Because like I, it, it is a smart, you know. Because instead of spending a lot of money new controller and all, but like at the same time, it's like, I mean, I'm not hating on it because in the end, you know, a new controller isn't really bad in the PlayStation side because, mm-hmm. you know. Like you said, just like replacing the whole housing on it so you don't have to worry about it completely isn't bad. Just like how Xbox and their, you know, first elite controller, that thing was terrible when it came to a uh, drift. So it depends on the price point. So, that you know, if you if you point. can convince me to buy it at a reasonable price, I'm not spending two hundred dollars. I spent two hundred dollars on like multiple elite controllers because how trash it is. But I'll say uh, this, man. If I were actually like a bigger, if I played PlayStation more consistently and I played competitive games on PlayStation, this would be right up my alley, right? I would definitely be here for this a thousand percent. But for me and, and how I game, I, it's definitely ain't yeah. happening for me. But it's cool. It's cool to see that, you know, they're, they're trying. Obviously, I think a lot of people can kind of say at this point that the PlayStation controller, um, at least the, the dual sense like has been the better controller of you know the two systems like i still prefer my xbox controller but i think the things that they've done the innovation that they've they've uh you know unlocked with this with the with the dual sense it's, it's pretty damn good you know like i got to give them their credit see see my my shit is dusty bro <laughs> it's dusty bro. but it's still my, beautiful yeah my blue controller hella dusty right now i got two of them. <laughs> it's crazy i i only bought the blue cuz it's on sale for like fifty bucks, and then I had like twenty dollars reward, so I only got it for like thirty. But I mean, like I said, I do enjoy playing on my PlayStation. It's just that since everybody is on Xbox, then like you know, I'm just gonna be playing on Xbox with my boys. I'm not gonna just play PlayStation unless mm-hmm. like I'm just on it already. And yeah, I want to play Fortnite. That's different. But PlayStation needs more competitive shooters for me to like want to go out there and spend. I'm just going to say $200 because it is a dual sense and that itself is $70 per controller. Unless yeah, I come out with like a banger first party shooter, you're not really going to like make me or convince me to buy like this expensive controller because it's not really, I, I don't view my PlayStation as a hardcore gaming sweaty system. You know what I'm saying? It's just more of like a casual story based system to me. So what if they drop this with the new uh, Last of Us multiplayer game? And they 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 bill it as a more competitive. I it may not move the needle for you to get this controller, but you think it might it might push more people to get it though. Like if if PlayStation really does sense. make that pivot into the more competitive shooting thing, yeah. it definitely does make sense. But I just don't think for a game like The Last of Us, I don't know if it would. Like I don't know how competitive The Last of Us is going to be as a multiplayer game. 
because The Last of Us One had a multiplayer and it was honestly really dead and I really didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. But like like I said, it's just like you gotta have that multiplayer game to hook me. Like it sucks that they killed off Killzone because we haven't seen Killzone and I'll I doubt we'll get Killzone in a while and there's really no first party you know, multiplayer games that PlayStation has that piques my interest. I feel you. I feel you on that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it is funny, though, because it's like, who is this? I mean, I know who this is for, but it's just interesting to me because it's not like, a, I don't know, PlayStation's not like a sugary box, you know? So, I mean, they yeah, have, I mean, they, like, it's, they have caught on say, it, but yeah. I was just going to say Call of Duty is like the main thing right now uh, until the whole deal is over with PlayStation and Call of Duty. Like, that's all they really have, in my opinion, for like competitive shooter. Like, the only other games I see competitive running on is like 2K, and like 2K's, you don't need it for 2K, in my opinion, unless you just be smashing your controller every time. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there, there are definitely some other games in there. I'm sure that it, people would love to get used for. But yeah, in my eyes, I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm, if I want a, a cust like a scuff type controller, or elite type controller, chances are I'm on, I'm on Xbox. But who knows, man? Who knows? I mean, maybe for like some players on PC, but but I feel like this is gonna be expensive. Like I feel oh, like yeah, this is gonna no. end up being like two fifty. It's it's gonna be expensive, but it can't be more than like it's got to be less than two hundred. It's got to be around the price of the elite controller, even though the elite controller is like one eighty. It can't it can't be more than the scuff. I feel like you got to take the the chance on the price and hope that people would rather buy that than the scuff. I think I, I, I really think when you factor in the the things that are in the dual sense anyways, and then you add on top of it, like some of the stuff is kind of innovative, right? The, the ability to, to like completely remove that, um, that housing for the, the sticks yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that's different. I, I, I could see PlayStation touching that scuff, you know, price point. I, I think two fifty could be it, man, but, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this is one of those, like, so then another one of those like teaser type of situations where like we don't really know what the I'd hell's going on. Buy it. <laughs> I'm probably gonna you buy probably it. are going to buy it. Because <laughs> I have everything and I hate it because like my impulsive ass buying, bro. I got the Steam Deck that's collecting dust. <laughs> I told you it would. I told you it would. Yeah. But hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about that controller. There's a there's a rumor that PlayStation should be having a an event uh, early September, um, specifically the the eighth. So that that's in two weeks. Um, I'm hoping, you know, maybe we'll get a little bit more information about that controller. Maybe we'll get some more games, whatever, what have you. But uh, the last thing we wanted to talk about here, and it was definitely a big surprise to me. That's how they closed the show. Um, man, you had some thoughts about, you know, whether whether it was really a surprise or not. But for me, it was definitely a surprise. Um, we got to see Dead Island too, finally, <laughs> and uh, it What's definitely. Is, Definitely a little different than we had expected, right? Like, it's called Dead Island, but it's taking place in LA, which I guess is an island. I guess it is. Um, it is. It is. It is. It literally is, right? So it's like it is an island, right? Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll call it an island. You know, and LA is its own world. LA is its own world. I can definitely tell you that. Um, man, I I'm really excited for this game. I'm really, really excited for this game. The way they showed off the the tra- like the initial trailer, you know, definitely sets a tone. You kind of understand that, like, obviously the game's not going to be taking itself particularly seriously, um, which Dead Island never necessarily has. But, you know, it looks like they're going to have fun gameplay. Um, actually looks like they'll have an interesting story, which, I mean, I, it's been such a long time since I played the original Dead Island that I don't remember it having a good story or anything. I just remember... They're being co-op and running around and smashing people's faces in uh, with, you know, random things <laughs> and uh, the music and whatnot. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, the one thing that I remember seeing in the trailer was 
like as the the protagonist in the CG trailer was killing things, like he looked to his left and like he saw, you know, there are other people also killing things too. I'm wondering if the way they situated that was kind of like a MMO nod or if it was just like, okay, we're doing the traditional co-op thing. Because if they're doing like an MMO style thing, even if it's just like a couple you know, random people in your world, I would really like to see that. That would be dope as fuck to me. Like a like a GTA Online type of thing, but you know maybe less annoying. <laughs> yeah, like uh, we'll, we'll say like uh, Forza, because like Forza, you know, you're not necessarily racing everybody in your world, but there's just people chilling in your world. I mm-hmm. mean, mm-hmm. Yep. That, right. that would actually be pretty dope. But I feel like you know they said there's six available characters, you know, at launch and. I don't think they're going to go that route just because it's, you know, too innovative. Not everybody's going to be. I feel like they're just going to keep the same formula that worked in Dead Island one. So you're right. You're right. They could. They could. Uh, But I mean, but I also do think you could still do the like open world thing, even if there are just six characters to choose from. So I don't know, because I mean, they're not, you know, like look at Redfall, right? Like there's four characters to choose from, but you can be like anybody can be the same character multiple times over. So. I don't know. Uh, maybe they go that route. Maybe they don't. But I just feel like the way that they presented it in the trailer was kind of like a matter of fact, like, oh, OK, like I'm doing my own thing in this world. And there are also people doing their own thing in this world kind of thing. It didn't it didn't make it seem like a team up situation where it's like, oh, this is my crew. It was just like, all right, they're doing they're killing zombies. I'm killing zombies over here. Hi, bye, keep it moving kind of thing. And I I like that idea if it is presented, like you said, in a Forza style where it's just like people are in your world. And as long as they make sure that it's not tipped over to the sense where like people can completely fuck up your missions, like in Grand Theft Auto Online, um, because sometimes that really gets irritating. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. What do you think, man? Are Are you excited for this? You said that you've heard some rumors about this coming, so you weren't particularly surprised, right? I heard rumors, so I was kind of expecting it. But like, you know, when I when I saw it on the the um the show itself, you know, once uh, Jeff was like talking about how oh this uh, long awaited game's coming, I was like, oh, that's got to be it. And then I saw the man waking up, and I was like, that's definitely it. <laughs> but I have a theory. So I think what ended up happening is. Because, you know, Jeff was saying how, you know, there's a lot of games that was supposed to be shown on the Summer Games Fest, but didn't because mm-hmm. it wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that, like, they partnered up with, you know, Ghost Simulator to, like, give out that Dead Island trailer and, like, kind of, like, tease people, oh, Dead Island's coming back. But, like, it didn't. It was Ghost Simulator. And then, like, they brought it back here. So I think that they had to, like, have something, you know. Mm. Okay. You know, okay. Okay. I, Okay, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, all the trailers are ready, but like you know, let's go. Simulator is let's, you know, fuck around. I think that's probably what happened. Because there's no way Ghost Simulator is going to take a shot at Dead Island and then like you know, a couple months later, Dead Island gets announced. Facts, yeah, facts. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Manny, I like that one. I like um, that one, uh, but. I'm excited though. Like when they showed the gameplay and everything like that, I was like, first of all, I was like, yes, guns, because you know, dying light, no guns, kind of you know, horrifying. But at it's least rough. this one, you got guns to defend yourself. Speaking of dying light, though, they they dropped some uh, DLC, so the bloody ties is going to be happening. That that has like a somewhat of a like a game showy style theme going on. At least the way they presented the trailer kind of interested to go back into that they're also dropping like a big patch today i guess too um before the dlc comes out so i never got to finish that game you know a couple of our friends have have uh have said that they really like the game i personally think it's it's pretty uh garbage but it, <laughs> it I, I think it's pretty bad but um it's bad because of a lot of the bugs so if a lot of those bugs get taken care of you know i, I could get up in there and maybe try to finish that up Especially considering it's co-op, and I'd, I'll play anything with co-op in it, so we got to get that finished up. Um, but I'll definitely check out that DLC, too, if it's free. I mean, I didn't hear anything about a season pass, so we're lucky. I'll take it. Yeah. 
or or maybe it'll go into Game Pass and you know maybe the, if it is paid DLC, the the paid DLC be in Game Pass. But I think it is free, so we'll wait to see on that one too, man. But yo, Dead Island, I I need to see more. Um, it's it's dropping in February, so basically around the same time frame that Di- Dying Light Two dropped last or this year, early this year. So crazy that like you know within a year time frame, like we're getting similar games that were inspired by each other or well actually no the dying light or sorry dead island came first and then i think people who worked on dead island went to then go make dying light right um so interesting hardcore and they're like not no parkour for you my boy and then the game ended up becoming a successful hit and funny enough dying light 2 became mid and who knows maybe dead island could take the throne yeah, I think I think it will, man. I think it will. I think uh, giving themselves that extra time because it definitely went dark for quite a while. And then, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is being in L.A., I think that dynamic could change a lot. Like, because it seems like they're going with, like, the goofy, wacky characters. Like, I definitely was getting, like, GTA, but zombies vibes from, like, the way the trailer even started. And, you know, it, it seemed like there was just a lot of debauchery going on, and then you're meeting all these crazy characters. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited for, for this one. And I think this is going to be another one of those things that, like, hits in, in February. We'll have, you know, like, some more cool stuff to play. Hopefully we don't get, like, that, that like, what, three weeks where it was just, like, bang, 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 like, big game after big game. Mm-hmm. Only to then get eclipsed by Elden Ring. But um yeah, we'll see, man. Definitely got a lot of good games coming. Um even though I wanted to see more bigger announcements, I, I do have to say what we saw definitely piqued my interest. I will say it was also better than Summer Games Fest, so Oof. so yeah. Uh, what do we think, Minnie? I I'm giving it a B. Give it a solid B. Yeah, I think B is perfect because we got that one major triple A title with Dead Island. Uh, you know, some banger hit. Uh yeah, I think B's a pretty solid choice. Uh we got what sign a little sign to hold us over for now, but mm-hmm. you yeah, know. We, yeah, we definitely got stuff to hold us over. We got Tokyo Game Show. Um, that should be uh, coming, what, I think that's like mid-September. Usually, lately, we don't get much big news from that, but you know, it's still a thing that's coming. Um, and then the PlayStation Showcase better. Just yeah, supposedly better this now. PlayStation Showcase is going to be dropping at some point. So we know we're going to expect some big news there. Um, but after that, <clears throat> it's it's going to be dry as far as like bigger news up until Gamescom. But, you know, of course, we're going to start getting the games. I'm excited to get uh, my hands on Modern Warfare, excited to get my hands on Callisto Protocol. You know, those are probably the two biggest ones um, for this coming like holiday season. Um, but yeah, man. We'll see what else this week brings because Gamescom's not over. So there's still some stuff that we, we're going to be learning about. We still got the Xbox showcase like we talked about. You know, probably going to be a low key one, but we will. Uh, we'll see what we have to talk about next week, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, give us some big announcements, Microsoft. You know, shit. Yo, th- just hit us. Hit us off with something crazy. Just like announce announce that this Activision <laughs> thing is done. You know, like it, it's solidified. Give us Modern Warfare on Game Pass. Show us some crazy shit. Like just, just go okay. swing for the fences, Microsoft. <laughs> have a J. Give us something. <laughs> never gonna happen, bro. Never. I, I know. I know. We're, I really think next year will have to be like the another big year for them because I think they've they put themselves in a situation where they're like, all right, we have to like keep our heads down and focus on this fucking act act Activision acquisition and um yeah i don't think we're gonna get much news from them the rest of this year but who knows but uh yeah i think this is a good place to end it um you know opening night live was definitely a success you know i think Mandy and i both you know said bees you know definitely solid showcase so hopefully the rest of gamescom is also gonna live up to the hype as well but uh until then guys we're gonna check you out next week thank you for watching and listening Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys are hitting us up on the YouTube channel. Um, Also, make sure to follow us, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Um, That stuff really helps us out big time. And yeah, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully with Chris uh, along with us. So thank you guys. He was a part of the DLC this week, so 
<laughs> All right, guys. Peace.